Today I want to share about earnest hearts. And it's been, uh, you know, I, was, I had a really tough time asking God, you know, what do you want to share today? And, uh, you know, there was a, a verse that emerged, and uh, it's 1 Corinthians 1.27. Does anyone know this verse? 1 Corinthians 1.27, God says, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise, and the weak things of the world to shame the strong. It's a powerful verse, 1 Corinthians 1.27. And uh, I, could f- I could feel from it. And then later on in the, in the verse, it says, I do these things so that you may be humble before the Lord. You, you can be humble. Uh, and you may recognize in ways we can recognize how it's not our power, but somehow God is working through us. And so you may be weak and you may, you know, be foolish. I may be foolish. And Takaya would be the first to tell you that I'm a very foolish man. Uh, But God uses those things in order to show that in our humility with God, there's an amazing blessing that comes. And so I'm very humble uh, to that reality right now. I was asking God, what do you want to share? And it's just, it's like, uh, Josh, you may be foolish and uh, you may not be the most, you know, uh, strong, but God is, I want, I want to use you. I want to share through you. And I feel God's earnest heart. And so that's where uh, what I want to share today is the earnest heart of God and of our true parents of Jesus. And what I want to start with is what just happened today. I'm going to invite Paula to share next week more comprehensively about the experience. But we had our community annual pancake breakfast. Yes. Who was there? Who showed up? Awesome. Some of you I know just came, like, you've, you met us there somehow. <laughs> and uh, it, was, it was an amazing uh, opportunity to eat good food and just be with the community. Uncle Randy, who's world famous, was our cook. Uh, and then Shoko-san and Michiko-san. And I, I want to make sure, oh, Martha was helping with the front and creating the environment. Also, we had Kengo Kawa was one of the main external coordinators for it. And you don't see him today because while he was lifting something, he pulled his back. Uh, So he worked too hard. And so he's resting at home. Kengo, I know you're watching. Kengo, we love you. And, And we gave out tons of food. Also, Mikuni and the team, Taka Kikuchi, the Nagoya kids went around town passing out cookie dough to different houses based off of a Mrs. Ozono's suggest, strong suggestion that we pass out. We have all this cookie dough, so we're going to do it again. We have still more passing out to neighbors, and those neighbors ended up coming. And uh, just grateful to all the support. On Katrina in the kitchen with Mayumi-san and Derek De Niro helping to set up from way early in the morning uh, with this whole team of 15 guys. We, are offering, we offer prayer here every morning at 6 a.m., and it's open to all. And there was, you know, there was a decent amount of people praying, and we were lifting it up in prayer. And then when I walked outside right after the prayer, I saw more people outside preparing to build these uh, big tents and, and, and overhangs. And so uh, I was so moved by that. And, uh, of course, Reverend Tengen putting in so much of his own effort and, uh, uh, to prepare for this. And thank you to Uncle Keith. Uncle Keith's an MVP. Uh, he's in every event supporting and taking care of all things. And Madoka, Suzuka, uh, free pancake. <laughs> just one. <laughs> just a singular pancake. Uh, but, uh, yeah, just uh, it, it was really amazing. And I, I want to give thanks most of all to Paula and Max Sukata, uh, our incredible parents of the year. Uh, who, without, you know, Paula is a woman of divine vision. And uh, she, she is a testimony of that reality. And Max is a true husband, <laughs> uh, serving. And together they are, are leading our Ministerio de Latino and uh, embracing the heart of the 360 degrees around this church community. Um, and, and it was just beautiful. Uh, there was a brother that came. I don't know if he's here, but Omar, if you're here, uh, just, you know, people coming from around the neighborhood uh, to come and enjoy. Also, our mayor showed up, the mayor of Monterey Park, uh, Mayor Sanchez. And uh, he brought his daughter, who he calls the little mayor, uh, Lil Mayor, as we say in this day and age. And uh, it was beautiful. Now, the really cool thing about this mayor is that 
he was Takayo's high school teacher. <laughs> yeah. And、uh, at Alhambra High School, where Mrs. Ozono and Mama D were also cafeteria ladies, so he recognized our community.、Uh, did anyone else have Mayor Sanchez in Alhambra High? He taught history. He taught history. So many of your kids had him as a teacher. <laughs> And、uh, it was awesome. Takayo like, looked at him and he was like, she was like, wait, wait, what? That's my high school teacher. <laughs> Ran over to him and he was like, oh, I know you. <laughs>、uh, really beautiful. And he has an amazing heart. He has a strong faith. Uh, that was very encouraging, and he took office four days after the mass shooting that took place here in Monterey Park、uh, at the dance studio in Monterey Park. And so we're, we're honored to have him. Thank you to Paula reaching out to bring him. And、uh, yeah, just、uh, amazing, amazing, amazing. So I think, you know, my, my personal reflection with these、uh, programs, I'm amazed by our church community. We do so much. Even next week, we have a huge concert that we're going to be putting on for the community as well. And、uh, I'm always just like humbled by the total investment of the individuals here. So if you're new here, welcome. We're the world's busiest church. <laughs>、uh, but we're also a community of people who are striving to realize a bigger dream. We, the reason why we're so active here, I feel, is that we are resonating with the heart of God. And the heart of God suggests. That God is unsatisfied with a, even a single person not being in his bosom.、Uh, in our community, we don't believe necessarily that there should be anyone left behind, there, that the day of,、uh, of, of rapture is actually a day where we're coming to a reckoning as human beings to bring all of mankind, all of God's children, into God's bosom. And so in the end times, We actually have a perspective of hope that in the end times is a moment when we, as a collective body, were able to bring everybody in to build God's kingdom here on earth. And the reason is for that is because we believe God is our heavenly parent. And so there's no one that God cannot be satisfied until every single child is in his bosom. Amen? And so I believe that's what inspires us, right, Paula? That's what inspires you、uh, and, and what drives us to keep going, to realize the dream. And so for the last few weeks, we've been going through a series, and it's been, we call it the essence of truth. And we've been sharing the essence, the basis of our church community here. And we started with the Creator. And so、uh, I encourage you to go re watch those as kind of this is the basis of our, our, our truth that we stand on. And the first. The first fundamental question is what is the nature of God? And so we addressed how God has made man and woman in his image, male and female, he created them, meaning that God has a masculine and a feminine attribute. This is biblically declared. And it was interesting when we gave this sermon, we had a, a series of other Christian pastors that were joining us. And afterwards, they came up to me and they were like, that's what the Christian community needs to hear. We've been, unafra- we've been afraid to share the truth of God. That God is not just our father, but God is also our mother. And these pastors, this pastor from Hill City Church with Dietrich Haddon, he was reiterating that to me afterwards. He's like, This is true. This is true. We don't want to see it because it's, you know, in, in, in the Bible, it often refers to God as our father, our father. But in biblical scripture, Jesus. And, 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 and the scripture of the Old Testament is declaring that God is masculine and feminine because he made us in the image of him. And so we believe that God is our heavenly parent. And then we went to Jesus because we stand on that, that foundation. Jesus is our Messiah and the only begotten Son. And therefore, Jesus comes to bring the new wine and also to bring humanity back to God. And we understand that in our community, we understand that Jesus' dream was to realize a family and build God's family on earth. But because of the disbelief of the Jewish people of the time, the family that surrounded him, they put him and sent him to the cross. Amen? And so this is, this is our, our understanding. And so Jesus' mission was left unfulfilled. 
Jesus couldn't realize the dream that he originally had, so he had to go the course of the cross to give us something of spiritual salvation, which was uh, through, the, through his blood on the cross. And so we believe in that. That's our foundation. And then last week, we talked about providence, which is from all the way up until the time of Jesus, God prepared the Israelites. And then from that point, God has been preparing again, preparing again for the new advent, the second advent, for the Messiah to return and for that fulfillment of the dream of God, which is his kingdom here on earth. And so the Bible tells us, seek ye first the kingdom of God, meaning that we're not here to just for our own personal salvation. Uh, if that's what you're here for, God bless you. We start there. But our goal is not to reside there. Our goal is to build the kingdom of God here on earth. That's the dream. That's, that's the providence of God. And in order to reach that point, what God has been longing for from the very beginning is for parents to arrive, families to be born, and a kingdom to be built through those families. And so we all stand as uh, little gods with lowercase g, minor g. <laughs> and, and we stand as parents, and we know and we honor our true parents, Father and Mother Moon, who are our founders, as those individuals who were called, received the baton from Jesus to step into this new providence to realize God's kingdom here on earth. And that is the foundation of our essence. And so we have much more to share about the essence of our truth, but actually for the next, today and next week, we're going to take a pause on this series. Uh, and, and, and I kind of want to just digest a little bit of where we're at now and kind of the attitude leading into the providence of now and us as a community and us as Monterey Park, possibly. And um, and we're going to get back to it after two weeks. Next week, by the way, we have Blinky's concert. That'll be our Saturday night service. And then the next day, we have our family brunch. And so our family service where all the families come together. Uh, and you're invited to be there. So we'll take a pause. And actually, we launched a few days ago 40 days of witnessing and devotion. Did you hear about this? Did anyone not hear about this? Some of you. So a few weeks ago, two weeks ago already, we launched 40 days of witnessing and devotion in preparation for uh, the uh, Songhua ceremony of Father Moon and True Father. And uh, this is a time for us to offer sincere devotion and to also witness. And uh, that's kind of our focus. And we were given a message by our international president that we were asked to share with everyone. It's quite long, so we're not going to share it. I'm going to summarize this message today, if that's okay. And I want to encourage everyone in our e-news, go watch. You can watch the full sermon and also the transcript there. But I just want to give a summarization of our international president's message to us all. And I hope it can resonate with you and f you can feel, even if you're brand new here, you can feel, oh, this is, this is how God is moving, not just in L.A. Family Church, but in Monterey Park, in Los Angeles, and in America and the world right now. You can somehow vibrate with how God is moving so we can find ourselves closer to God. Amen? Amen. So I want to read some of uh, Father and Mother Moon's words, True Parents' words, uh, before we jump all the way in. And uh, just as a preface, and uh, I got to pull up the slides here. And this was shared in May 2023. And Mother Moon shares, the first responsibility we need to fulfill is national restoration. I've read this before. So, National restoration means that we cannot continue with the current structure. All blessed families, all our families, all leaders, all members should focus on witnessing on the front line. That is why Mother, Mother Moon, is changing the existing structure and that Mother Moon wants to focus on developing the church centering on three levels, small churches, middle churches, large churches. And we should all multiply these churches in the different boroughs, counties, and cities. And we're one of those. We're one of those cities. And uh, actually, Mother Moon has asked, I don't know if you know, but she's recently asked, you know, how is Los Angeles doing? And that means a lot, you know, it also is very burdening, <laughs> a little, it's a very heavy, it's like, oh gosh, she's asking how we're doing, uh, and uh, I think, and she had some concerns, and that's good, it's good to have concerns from Mother, and um, we honor her because we really believe she's, she's got the pulse of God, and, and uh, if you don't know that yet for yourself personally, we invite you into a deeper experience with that, and uh, 
you know, for myself personally, I, you know, today was so powerful because it was, and I thank Paula so much for her vision, but, you know, it was one of the first times we as a community kind of opened our doors to the public. And I know we've done this in the past, and I know we've made effort in the past to bring people from different areas. And we've held huge events here. We've had thousands, you know, hundreds of people in this room. Um, and we've held, you know, programs, concerts. But this was the first time where we opened up our church to our local community. Unusually so. You know, it's surprising. We're, you know, we're this kind of uh, movement or this family church. And we hadn't really opened up the space for the community to know who we are. And so the, the reality is, is that actually our community doesn't know who we are so much. So I met this brother today, Daniel. He showed up. He works at East Los Angeles College as one of the administrators there. And he was like, I didn't even know you guys existed. I was like, we've been on Riggin and Finley for eight, you know, eight nine years. We've been here. But we hadn't opened up the, the space for people to see us. And, uh, and, and maybe that's because of the time we were in, but I feel now, as we're reading here, that our responsibility is, of course, the restoration of the nation. But when you really think about it and you boil it down, it actually starts with just the community surrounding our area. Monterey Park. And so the last few hours as I was digesting this experience, I was thinking, you know, when the initial conversation with Paula and Reverend Tangan and Kengo and Takayo, our pastoral team, was, you know, we're called to reach the 360 degrees around us. Even you think about how Jesus worked, how Jesus walked. Jesus was going place by place, but he was just looking at those that were 360 degrees around him. Are these people ready to hear the new wine that I have to share? That kind of earnest heart. And he asked, you know, ask the Ask the people to come. And then the people started to gather and, and, and start to recognize this man. And what comes with recognition? Persecution. It came and, and even Jesus goes to his hometown and he's denied by his own family. He's denied by his own family. He says, he, and he says, you know, foxes have holes they can sleep in. Birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Wow, like, but Jesus was concerned about the 360 degrees around him. Today, thank you to Paula, who responded to a call of reaching 360 degrees around. We, as a community, have to open up our doors. You know, and, and with doing so, we have an amazing truth. We have an amazing spirit here. We have the most precious gift from heaven, I believe, is here. We have our chunchimwan, which is where, you know, all this spiritual activity is moving. We have all these things. And yet we shell off. We shell off. And so Mother recently had some powerful words to share about this particular point. April 2022, she shared, first, however, since true parents emerged from Korean people, this nation, the Korean, by the way, this nation needs to become a people that attend a heavenly parent and one that moves forward with true parents. And then she shares this. This is powerful. And I think it has a lot to just for our life. She says, prior to talking about national restoration, Gapyong and Sorak must be restored. Do your best. We should be able to successfully carry out witnessing. So what is Gapyong? What is Sorak? <laughs> so our, our central area that we have in Korea for all of our activity, it, the location is called Sorak. That's the city. And, the, and kind of the county is called Gapyong. That's the location. So she's speaking to these Korean leaders. And she's saying, you know, <laughs> we can dream all we want about Korean unification, which is our vision. We want to see the unification of North and South Korea. That's our dream. Uh, you know, and we can talk all we want about national restoration, but prior to even talking about that, have we restored our own city? That's a very powerful sentiment and truth is that we, we, we hold to the vision of a greater thing, but have we restored our own city? And so I started to digest that today. I was thinking, you know, even, 
you know, think nation, but even, don't even think Los Angeles, Joshua. Think Monterey Park, East Los Angeles. <laughs> you know, Alhambra area. Have we made the effort to restore this area? I want to tell you that some people have, and they have been. I, you're maybe curious, what is this background I'm using on these slides? Does anyone know where this is? Oh, Hannah, where is this? This is East Los Angeles College. And why is, why is this special? Because we have amazing people who've been witnessing at East Los Angeles College for numbers of years to be able to restore this city. I'm talking about the Oyas, the Kikuchis, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, who else am I missing? Uh, just an amazing group of people who've been offering their hearts here. I got permission to show the Oyas. Um, this is East Los Angeles College, which is actually in Monterey Park. It's, it's actually part of the district of the mayor that came here this morning. Um, this is us. This is our city. Monterey Park is our city. And Monterey Park has recently suffered, deeply suffered. If you think about the earnest heart of God, we must think about that where we're at, just even the location around us. We can dream all we want, right, Uncle Derek, all we want about the nation being restored and make all of our political claims about what's going on in our nation, all, everything we want to say and choose sides and pick all these things, talk about the economic challenges that we're faced with. They're very real. But think about just the 360 degrees around us. The heart of God is that those people right across the street are crying. That's my child. My child is crying. And do we know? Do we know their heart? Do we know? And I think that's, I feel God is revealing to me how serious this is. You know, what kind of attitude should I have to embrace I think we, we've done an amazing thing here, and we have incredible leadership. I l thank Reverend Tangen, uh, our pastor, Reverend Tangen. Please give Reverend Tangen a round of applause, too. Uh, and I feel we have been s prepared for this moment where we open up our hearts to be able to do this. And so mother's saying, witnessing, 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 or in Koreans, chando, chando, chando. Share, share, share. But we do so by a living example. And we embrace those where they're at, and we lead them to where we know God wants them to be. So we don't compromise who we are. And we're willing to face the persecution that comes when we become recognized. I recognize that our church is not necessarily the most po positively viewed in the world. But I want to prove to you, and I want us to lead by example, that we have the spirit and we have the truth and the, necessity, the necessities to be able to fix the problems of the world. Aju, we have it. We can do it. And so our international president had this to say about our attitude. I'm just going to read the underlying points. The question is whether our hearts are alive with earnestness. Actually, I'll read this first paragraph. As we observe our brothers and sisters who receive heaven's call and faithfully devote their lives, we should ask ourselves whether we are really living as earnestly. Mother is truly desperate every moment. She lives with an earnest heart every day, seeking to bring heavenly parents' ideal to reality. And the context of this is he's sharing about, if you please go watch his speech, he's sharing about the situation of our missionaries worldwide. So we sent missionaries all across. Mike and Marianne Irwin were some of those missionaries. Who here has been a missionary, was sent somewhere? Yeah, amazing. And you, you were you sent somewhere out into the pioneering into some, some uh, developing country or somewhere. And, and he was sharing about the circumstances of those families and the situation there and, and the effort they're making, the dedication they're pouring out. And he's saying, 
to us is when you observe their situation and how earnestly they're pouring out, we must reflect about our own life. These are our brothers, our sisters. This is our family. We're family, right? They're, they're pouring out. And so I've had my own personal experience with this. I had a chance to go to the Philippines. And uh, I, I, I had a chance to, uh, to, to do outreach activities there for three, four months and um, had the opportunity to be a part of the family that's over there. And the thing that stood out to me the most is they had nothing. You know, they, they have nothing there. And uh, they, yet they, they're putting out their life every single day to share. You know, and, and all of them were college students. They're going through college, so they're all CARP. They, we were with CARP there. And, and, and despite having nothing and sometimes only one meal a day, they continue to go. They're continuing to go out and share and, 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 and alive. And they're not just doing so just like, I'm hungry. Do you know God? <laughs> I'm hungry. Do you know God? But like with vibrance, they're singing songs and they bring them over and then they start singing karaoke with them and teaching the divine principle and then karaoke again and karaoke again and all these, uh, you know, it's beautiful and, and they would prepare these meals for these guests and you, you know that they're preparing their own meal. They're not intending to eat at all. They're just preparing their own, just out of their own heart. It's just, here, have this. And then the guests are just, you know, loving it up, eating it up, but actually they're not eating anything. You know, this kind of attitude they're having. I was so moved by, by, by these brothers and sisters there. They, they poured out everything. And when we were there, it's like, as much as you want to give and support them as a missionary, they always give you more. Always give you more than you could ever give them. And that was the heart of these Filipino brothers and sisters. That is an earnestness of heart. That's the earnestness of heart. And we, I believe our international presence is asking us to reflect that and think about that for our own life. You say you're a believer. You say you're faithful. You say you stand with God and you're a soldier of God. And you say all these things, but hallelujah. And we, we can say, we can, we can testify to, to, to who we need to testify to. But how earnestly do you live? With what desperacy do we have to realize God's kingdom? So he provides kind of five points of attitude and focus that we should cultivate in this time. And so this is, I feel, uh, very powerful. And the first, he says, is about having a center, a clear center. So our center is clear. Heavenly parent. True parents. That's our center. And we don't stray from those things. This is our center. And then the second is spirituality. And this is where I want to encourage everyone again. Our chunchimwan is here for you. It's not for me. It's not for Takayo. It's for us. It's for you. Please take time to pray there. Cultivate your spirituality. Let yourself ring with the spirit of God again. And if you haven't tasted it, then you got to give yourself a chance. Offer devotion there. Pray there. The spirituality is the center. Uh, you know, we have the center and then we have our spiritual life that comes from that center. And the Chonshimon is there for us. And so the next piece is relationships. The key point that he gives is communication and honesty and transparency. And this is something as a pastoral team we are committed to also showing to you all as well. So moving forward, we are going to be much more transparent about the financial situation of our church, where things are going, how things are functioning, and I hope to share with you more in depth about where, you know, where, all, all collectively, where are we headed? I hope to share in more depth those things. It's about transparency and constant communication. And so my big thing is what I call Starbucks ministry. I am I am okay. Please call me. I am okay for you to call me and ask if we can get Starbucks together. I may not be able to reach you first, but I want to be able to. And one by one, we're going around meeting each of your families. But uh, really, please reach out. Do not hesitate. It's relationship. You know, family without communication is no family at all. 
You know, I, I, I even, Matt San knows this, I really dislike that I'm even on this stage. I really wish we had a stage right there. We were thinking we should crank out these first pews. No one sits on this one anyway, so yeah. we crank that out and just, you know, because it's not about someone being here, someone being there. God wants us to love each other. You talk about Abel and Cain relationship, all that is is that I love you and I care about you. So, you know, relationships is huge and communication is what allows that to manifest. So the attitude of that, please uh, help us to help each other. Uh, help, 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 help me and Takayo to help all of us together. So uh, Starbucks ministry, achoo. And the third, fourth piece is substantial growth. And he defines this in two different areas. There's quantitative and qualitative. Does any, do you know the difference? What is quantitative? How many? <laughs> Numbers. What's qualitative? How good? I like that. How many and how good? <laughs> so, and, and, and there's, there's a difference. In, in the past, we've always focused on this quantitative approach. And we like to give these beautiful reports. We had X number of people show up. And that's good. But we also have the qualitative aspect of growth. And I actually, someone asked me once, it's like, okay, your focus is growing the church. Well, are you tracking the numbers? And my answer is, yes, we are. Thank you, Shoko-san. But more importantly is, how do you feel? When you come into church, do you feel God? Do you feel, you know, do you feel like it's full? Do you feel like it's growing? And don't raise your hand if you, <laughs> you know, but you know, however you may feel, that's what we want to show, this qualitative development and growth. And then the last piece is sincerity. And this, I think, is the most fundamental, because this is what moves heaven. You know, everything, much of what we believe in can be boiled down into the singular statement from Father Moon, which is, utmost sincerity moves heaven. When you're sincere, why did our movement grow and develop? Because we, because Father Moon was showing people, wow, Lord, showing people. <laughs> Father Moon was showing people who God's nature was. Mother was sharing about God's nature, but they were doing it with a sincere heart. Sincere heart. We want you to feel that sincere heart, and we want us to cultivate that. When someone comes in, I want them to walk out feeling one thing. It's like, wow, these people love me. These people care. There's sincerity here. So, uh, and, I, and I think that extends beyond us. And this is, uh, come back to the point, which is, we're going to start, I really feel heaven is guiding us to really take care of Monterey Park. Right, Uncle Jose? We're going to take care of this city. And, and the key is how we have a sincere heart for this city. Because that's, you know, when you think about Jesus, that's Jesus' heart. It was just sincere. And he knew what he needed to say through his sincere love for people. So his last point is this. And he says in his speech, collective intelligence. But what I really felt he meant, Korean translation is rough to English, right? It's challenging. What I really felt he meant was collective earnestness. And the example that he gives is that it's very easy to snap one arrow. Very easy right? You can stop one arrow very easily, but if you have a bundle of arrows, it's very difficult to snap. So as individuals, as Takayo by herself can be easily snapped, but Takayo and I and Reverend Tang and Mikuni and Stu, now you got trouble. <laughs> collective heart, collective earnestness. That's why it's not enough for us just to Watch, you know, and, and sometimes I feel so, like, it's like shame or guilt or something, you know, and I have to just check myself with God. It's like, I got value, don't worry. I'm looking at Mikuni, Jasmine, and the carp guys and how, how much they're running, right? They're just running, and I feel almost like sh a little shame. It's like, what am I doing over here, <laughs> you know? But they're running and racing forward, but it's not enough for me just to watch them. I have to actually realize that carp alone, if they continue by themselves, they will snap. They need you. They need you. They need each one of you. 
We have to race towards the goal in earnestness, with sincerity, with the relationships, with the growth, with the strength of our spirituality, with our center. We need each and every one of us. So moving forward, that's part of our goal. We want to help us to bundle together collectively. We're going to get real tight. And it's going to get more hot than it is right now. <laughs> and we're going to cause a fire in Monterey Park that people can feel. And, 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 and we'll know the hearts and the tears of our brothers and sisters who are around us, God's children. Amen? Amen. So I, uh, I, I thank Dr. Song for his message that he's sharing. And he's going around the countries now analyzing and strategizing and listening and understanding and identifying. His, one of his particular focuses is future leaders. There's a strong emphasis on that from True Mother. And so I, yeah, what, what I want to conclude with is sharing something of an inspiration that we really feel is necessary. And if you look at these five points of attitude, the first two are the foundation, right? You have the right center, and you have the strength of your vertical spirituality. And I've mentioned the Chunshin one is there for you. And I encourage everyone after service, make your time there uh, and, and offer, offer a prayer. Even if you don't understand it fully, just try, see, test. Who knows? God is moving or not. Those five things start with the center and spirituality. And so starting on Monday we're going to be launching evening prayer visuals. So we will continue with our morning prayer visual. Every single morning, 6 a.m., I'll be here. Unless I'm somewhere else, I'll be here. <laughs> You'll see me and Takayo there, and we will continue to go forward. But we realize that not everyone has the opportunity to come at 6 a.m. I know my dad doesn't, and he expresses the challenge of that, right? Not being able to come. And so I know not everyone can come at 9 p.m. either, but we want to give everyone more opportunity to experience the presence of God, to connect to the heart of God, the heart of our true parents, and to know that God is alive and we can take, we can take all of this and be able to share it to the world with confidence. And you can be renewed in your own spirit. This is our center, our spirituality. So starting Monday, 9 p.m., please join us for prayer vigil. Not everyone, for those that are joining 6 a.m., please keep coming to 6 a.m. But I know for, the, for some people, it's not easy. So, so please join us. This is our commitment to continuing to elevate how God is moving through this community. And I know miracles will take place. Amen? Thank you so much. I'm a fool. You know, I'm not strong. But I know God is working through that to show the world something truly special. And I know we're in it together. We're that bundle of arrows, and we cannot be broken. Thank you.